and I just dove in that water, and uh, I had to get that confirmation for us. We had to know. Volunteer divers discovered the remains of an Orlando mom who's been missing for over a decade, according to her family. The new piece of information that helped crack the case. We are tracking falling temperatures across central Florida as a cold front is approaching us. We'll run down the numbers neighborhood by neighborhood straight ahead. Three people shot on New Year's Eve and now the search is on for the shooter. What happened when police arrived at that scene? Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. After vanishing 12 years ago, the remains of a missing Orlando mother were found over the weekend. Uh, a volunteer dive team found Sandra Lemire's minivan in a retention pond off of I-4 and 417 near Disney around World Drive. West News' Marlene Martinez tells us how they finally cracked this case. FHB is now investigating this crash. They tell us they are waiting on the medical examiner's office to identify the remains first. We've also checked in with Orlando police who say this is an active investigation and they will share more information once they have it. Let's talk about your weather now. The sun is setting across central Florida and that means the temperatures are dropping. Now. They are. It is a beautiful evening. Cold front is even moving in. So we've got a nice cool night, but a cooler tomorrow. So just be ready for that, my friends. Outside we go. There's Disney Springs. Uh, the tourists that are enjoying that last Last little bit, New Year's Day. It's a beautiful, beautiful one. Temperatures down that area in the lower 60s. We're at 63 in Kissimmee, 64 for us in Orlando, 66 in the villages, 64 degrees here in Leesburg, and along the shoreline, we find 60s as well. All of us in unison will be dropping nicely tonight, but not as quickly because these clouds will kind of act as a nice, warm, snuggly blanket. Cold front moves through, sweeps it all out by sunrise tomorrow, and limits our daytime time heating. So watch future cast temperatures tonight. All right. Uh, by about 11 o'clock, we'll be in the 50s north of town, still in the 60s for Brevard County. But it doesn't take long by five o'clock tomorrow morning, 40s and 50s. And by about seven, this is about the coldest point of the day. We'll be waking up to 39 in Ocala, 42 in Deland and the 40s as well in the metro. So there you go. 30s, 40s and 50s. Nice dry conditions. But tomorrow afternoon, some of us struggle out of the 50s. Let's run down the numbers for our Tuesday and discuss a couple of storm systems moving Central Florida's direction, including the potential for some stronger storms. It's Central Florida's most accurate forecast in a couple minutes. Tonight, Brevard County has again opened a cold shelter. Light Point Ministries in Titusville opened its doors to those in need at 5 o'clock. This will be open overnight and plans to serve dinner and breakfast. Universal's Volcano Bay is closing tomorrow due to the cold weather. The park did not say when it could reopen. Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park has also been closed for several days due to the cold and is not scheduled to reopen until Wednesday. To get the latest track on temperatures, download our free West 2 app. Turn on alerts for breaking updates on severe weather. The man shot by Marion County deputies has died. This all started with an hours-long standoff yesterday afternoon. Deputies say they were called to a home on Southwest 19th Avenue Road after reports of a man firing shots both inside and outside of his home. That man has now been identified as 41-year-old Stephen Clark Jr. Crisis negotiators tried to talk to him into a peaceful surrender, but when deputies say he pointed a gun towards them, they opened fire. Clark was taken to the hospital, where he later died. A Titusville shooting on New Year's Eve ended with three people wounded, and all of them are in the hospital. Those behind the shooting have not yet been caught. Our Brevard Bureau Chief Scott Heidler spoke with investigators and reports tonight from Titusville Police Headquarters. A Brevard County driver is in jail tonight after the sheriff says that driver was arrested for his seventh DUI. Deputies pulled Douglas Moore over Friday for an improper registration. The sheriff says deputies could smell alcohol and asked Moore to do a field sobriety test, but he refused and was arrested. Deputies say he is required to have an interlock device on his car but did not have one and was driving an unregistered car with improper tags. New year, new law. Starting today, a few new rules are officially in effect. Florida's move over law is expanding. Drivers already have to move over or slow down for emergency vehicles stopped on the side of interstates and highways. Well, now that will also include disabled vehicles with hazard lights on, emergency flares or signage. Another law requires more elected officials on the local level to disclose their finances. This bill brings them into compliance with standards already applied to officials like the governor and school board members. 
The next law allows law enforcement agencies to create a person with disabilities registry. The goal here to help law enforcement know what developmental or psychological disability a person may have when officers respond to a scene. And there's also an amendment to Florida's already existing bail and detention law. It requires the state Supreme Court to create a unified bail bond schedule. This prevents lower courts from settling lower amounts of required bail. A year-long program that gave drivers a discount on using toll roads has ended. The program gave 50% credits to drivers who use SunPass or other Florida transponders and make 35 or more toll road trips in a month. The $500 million program was expected to save drivers about $400 last year. The program expired at the end of 2023, so as of today, no more discounts at tolls. If you need to stock up on school supplies for the new semester, you are in luck. Florida has another back-to-school sales tax holiday. It begins today and runs for the next two weeks through the 14th. Items exempt from sales tax include learning aids and puzzles selling for $30 or less, most school supplies for $50 or less, some clothing, shoes, and accessories for $100 or less, and laptops and computer accessories for $1,500 or less. Many people who traveled for New Year's Day are now on their way back home. Take a look from our tower cam pointed at Orlando International Airport. Look at that sunset. Officials expect more than 168,000 travelers to pass through the airport today, and things look pretty clear right now. The holiday travel <coughs> period runs through Sunday. And as the new year begins, many people have resolutions, but a Monday reset at the beach was at the top of a lot of people's list. Well, the morning wasn't too busy. More and more people started rolling in later in the afternoon, some paddle boarding, others even swimming in the cold waves, a few simply enjoying the view, some taking this time to reflect. I'm very grateful. I should have more of a plan for my life, but I'm retired. I'm like 66, and then just to be able to walk the beach is an uh, accomplishment for me. Many people agree the beach is the perfect way to end the year and also start a new one. Another great tradition, a New Year's tradition in Orlando, Camping World once again hosted the Cheese It Citrus Bowl. This year's matchup was Tennessee from the SEC versus Iowa from the Big Ten. The Vols beat the Hawkeyes 35 to zip. Today we spoke to fans ahead of the game who came from all over to watch their favorite teams. To go to a different city, play a different team, see lots of meet new people and come home with a victory, it feels good. Family friends from Iowa, we all dispersed across the country, so it's a great meetup spot and come to Orlando and have some fun. It was a little bit of a trek to get here, but it's a labor of love for our balls. You know? It was worth it for him. It was not a good start to the new year for the Hawkeyes fans. Again, 35 to nothing. West Street's Chris and Lago was there for the game. We'll break it all down for us ahead in sports. Flagler Beach Police is asking people to stay off the dunes. I'm Pamela Combe, and this all comes after beachgoers damaged this one. The search is on for the person responsible for damaging a dune in Flagler Beach. West News Pamela Combe explains why it's crucial to stay away from these sensitive areas. Destroying or harming the dunes could land violators in jail for up to 60 days and a fine of up to $500. 2024 could be someone's lucky <laughs> year. The first Powerball drawing of the year is set for tonight. And it's a lot of money. The jackpot has now grown to an estimated $810 million. And if you win the grand prize, you have the option to take a one-time lump sum of about $409 million. That's what I would do. Tonight's drawing is at 11 o'clock. We'll have the winning numbers right here on Western News at 11. Evan Health welcomed its first baby of 2024 shortly after midnight. Take a look. We got him. Here he is. It's a Ho jackpot baby. Yes, it is. Jose Umahog, the fourth, the six pound, four ounce baby boy, was born at 1208 this morning. Welcome. He's such a cutie. Mm -hmm. All right. It has been so cold over the last few days. The Florida Manatees have now flocked to warmer waters. Here's a look now through the Save the Manatees live camera over at Blue Springs State Park. This is a popular gathering spot for sea cows trying to escape the cold temperatures. Water most places is too frigid, but here it feels pretty good. So where do we go to escape the cold temperatures? We stay inside, especially now that the sun is down <laughs> across central Florida. It is a chilly one out there. Yeah, and I know our weather is going to be kind of up and down, cold, hot, all over the place. Let's get you over to Eric Burris right now with some details. It is such a pretty 
sunset, though, even if we do have some complicated weather on the way. Uh, good evening to you. Temperatures dropping little by little. We're in the mid 60s here in the city. It's about 64 degrees in Sanford, 61 now in Palm Coast. And over the next few hours time, the temperatures will continue to fall into the 50s, 40s, and even for some of us down into the 30s. Light breeze out of the west. That's lovely. But take a look at our next weather feature. Moving in tonight, it's a cold front. It will start off by feeding these clouds over top, which means tonight's temperatures will be just a little bit milder. And then for tomorrow, as that front pushes on through, it means a chillier afternoon. For tonight, though, 62, 7 o'clock, about 60 degrees by 9, and into the upper 50s by 11 o'clock tonight. When you wake up in the morning, it's the 40s again, but instead of the low and mid 40s in the metro, it'll be about 48 degrees in the city. 45 here in Apopka and Zellwood. I think 48 Waterford Lakes, 49 for Wedgefield back over to Christmas. Uh, we take you up to Seminole and Volusia counties, and it's a little further north. Temperatures are going to be just a little bit cooler. 46 in Sanford, 44 degrees Ormond Beach, 41 in Astor, 43 in Deland. Now, these blue shades here denoting where we could even see some patchy frost. Marion County, even inland Flagler. Don't be surprised if you see it. 37 in Reddick, 39 degrees in Ocala, 41 in Bushnell, and 44 degrees in Mount Dora. And for our southern spots, upper 40s to the lower 50s back over to the beaches. For tomorrow, it's going to be beautiful. But instead of right around 70 like we did today, we'll do the 50s and 60s. Bright, beautiful, but just a little bit cooler. Here's a look at our day planner forecast. Waking up to the 40s in the metro. By lunchtime, 59. And we'll tiptoe into the lower range of the 60s before those temperatures drop off a little bit. Cold front will be south. It'll be that nice, cool, northerly breeze. But once that's done, we already start to watch our next weather feature, which is this storm system working our direction. For Wednesday, it gives us a southerly influence on the winds, so that's a warmer temperature. And then late Wednesday into Thursday, that storm system actually moves through. Here's a look at Futurecast, and we've sped it through. This is Wednesday, 9, 930. A few showers in our northern spots continuing through the overnight stretch. Pockets of heavy rain here or there. And then by Thursday morning, the good news is we'll start to clear out all that moisture and we'll be able to get on with our day. But that's just storm system number one coming in on Thursday. All right, then we start to look off to the west because there's a snowstorm that's developing across like North Texas into Oklahoma and Kansas. Some snow on the northern side of this. It'll be showers through the Lone Star State. But as it crosses the Gulf of Mexico, the area of low pressure, the energy source dips a little further south on this one. And Saturday afternoon and evening, we're even looking at the potential for not just gusty showers, but gusty thunderstorms. And the dynamics are there with a little bit of extra wind energy in the atmosphere that we could be talking about some stronger storms across the peninsula. Still far too early. It's Monday, for goodness sake. But I do want to make sure that you know, looking all the way ahead to Saturday, we may have some stormy weather moving our direction. So putting it together then, Central Florida's certified most accurate seven-day forecast showing an up and down with temperatures because we have a storm system. We don't have a storm system. We have a storm. You know, it's kind of all over the place, but showers in there on Thursday, thunderstorms on Saturday. Otherwise, it's a lot of sunshine and we'll just call it variable temperatures. Back to you guys. <laughs> That's a positive spin on it, Eric. Thank you. After New Year's revelers cleared out from Times Square in New York City. This is what was left over. Trucks and people brought in to clean up nearly 100,000 pounds of litter. 3,000 of that was confetti. Workers cleaned up this square in just a few hours. Many people traveled to Central Florida to ring in the new year. Celebrations downtown included live music at the annual block party. One business owner says crowds were up to nearly 6,000 people before the pandemic in 2019, and more people have returned over the years. Another big draw, the bowl game over at Camping World Stadium. Let's check in with Kristen Lago. Hey, Kristen. Hey guys, well I've got one question for you to kick off your New Year's Day. Are you feeling the cheesiest? Because I know I am. The cheese at Citrus Bowl signaling the end of bowl season here in the city. Beautiful. Next in sports, we'll bring inside Camping World Stadium to take a look at what happened. Uh, spoiler alert, whole lot of good for the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, same couldn't be said for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The highlights and more coming at you just after the break. Exclusive golf car confessions with Ludacris. The untold story behind his huge club anthem. Roll out. Next, Access Hollywood. Now, West 2 Sports. Sponsored by Mullinax Ford.
Welcome back, everybody, and a very happy new year. I'm Kristen Lago, and in my mind, there is no better way to usher in 2024 than with a little college football, right? Sports coming at you live from Camping World Stadium, where after the untimely demise of Strawberry, the edible Pop-Tarts mascot, it was Ched Z's turn to bask in all the glory. The 2023, excuse me, 2024 Cheese and Citrus Bowl kicking off earlier this afternoon. For now, live at Camping World Stadium, Kristen Lago, Watch 2 Sports. We'll be right back. We have several stories we're following for you tonight at 7. A great white shark tracked near Florida where it was found off the East Coast. Plus, the moment police say a man tried to kidnap a four-year-old child at a South Florida Walmart, how he was eventually stopped. That's our report for tonight. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt is next. We'll see you again tonight at 7, 10, and 11, but we are always online at West.com or by using our free West News mobile app. Thank you for watching WESH 2 News. Get caught up on local news, originals, and more. Download the Very Local app and stream for free on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, iOS, and Android mobile devices.